Welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the movie Homeless to Harvard, The Liz Murray Story, released in the year 2003. The movie opens up with a young girl, Lisa, fighting with her mother, Jean. Jean is asking Lisa to return her money, but the latter denies having it. While the commotion is going on, Lisa's father, Peter, is casually sitting on the couch watching Jeopardy. He seems to be excellent at the game and answers all the questions correctly. Meanwhile, Lisa's sister, Liz, overhears her mother squabbling for money and behaving strangely. Hence, she immediately heads to her room and brings the money from under the blanket. Jean notices the money in Liz's hand and tries to snatch it from her, but Lisa intervenes and stops her from doing so. However, after Jean pleads for the money, Lisa hands it to her. After getting the money, Jean gently smiles at Liz, and in the background, Liz mentions that the smile on her mother's face is what she wants to see forever. After this, Jean walks out of the house, despite Liz's approval. Left with no other choice, Liz urges her father to stop Jean, and he agrees. Later, the father-daughter duo can be seen following Jean on the sides of the streets. Peter approaches Jean and helps her cross the road, but to everyone's surprise, the two go near a drug dealer and buy some drugs for both of them. Liz is shocked to see this, but believes that her parents' needs are much more important than hers. The next day, police officers arrive at Liz's house and take Jean away. Liz tries to stop the officers, but to no success. As Jean is suffering from schizophrenia, she shivers while the officers put her in the ambulance. Liz also tries to enter the ambulance, but one of the officers takes control of her and pulls her back. In the next scene, Liz is at her school, which she attends very rarely. She doesn't like being in school and interacting with other kids. Because of her family conditions, she often takes showers, and as a result, her classmates tease her for stinking. Despite all this, she gives a test in her class and scores a perfect 100. Her teacher is surprised to see that and hands her a few clothes, suggesting she come to school regularly. She also asks her about how she's able to score so well without coming to school. In reply, Liz tells her that she reads a lot of encyclopedias at home. Before leaving, the teacher threatens her by saying that if she does not come to school regularly, she will inform child welfare and the rest will be done by them. After coming back home, Liz finds out that her mother has returned. She goes straight to her mother and shows her the perfect score she got on the test. Jean becomes very happy to see the results and suggests Liz to study hard. She also mentions that she's suffering from AIDS and needs to be away from drugs. Jean then requests Liz to come with her to her father's place, but Liz refuses to leave Peter alone. Hearing this, Jean gets enraged and storms out of the room. The scene then fast forwards a few days, where Liz is having biscuits with water. One can clearly see that Peter is not taking good care of Liz. In the meantime, the child welfare group arrives there and decides on taking Liz away. Surprisingly, Peter doesn't even try to stop them and instead hands over Liz's belongings in a suitcase. Liz tries her best to convince them that Peter is taking good care of her, but the officers don't believe her and take her away to a shelter home. Inside the shelter home, Liz is bullied and teased. Despite this, she tries to stay away from all the fuss and give no attention to the chaos going around. With that being said, she still doesn't like to go to school, and the teacher can be seen complaining to her about that. In the next scene, Liz goes to her grandfather's house to visit her mother and sister. She becomes very happy to see her mother in proper shape and good condition. She even goes out with her and has lunch. There, she gets to know that her old apartment has been seized by the authorities as Peter was unable to pay the rent on time. Hearing this, Liz returns to her old apartment and tries to find her encyclopedias, but is compelled to return back empty-handed. Following this, she decides to start a new chapter of her life. In the next scene, Liz can be seen at a new school with Jean asking her to study well for her future. After Jean leaves, Liz goes to her classroom. The teacher calls her by the name Elizabeth, but she retaliates by saying that she doesn't like being called by that name. Everyone in the classroom laughs at her answer, but surprisingly, a girl named Chris supports her. After the class, while Chris and Liz are walking home together, they start bonding by playing with mud and throwing it at one another. Later that day, Liz invites her school friends to her grandfather's place, knowing that he would be out till 6 p.m. When the group is enjoying themselves, Jean arrives at the door drunk. Liz immediately opens the door and takes her inside the bathroom. 
Her friends make fun of Jean, but Chris asks them to behave and leave. After this, Liz gives her mother a proper bath and puts her to bed. Just then, Chris approaches her and reveals about her tragic childhood and how she was harassed by her father when she was just seven years old. Hearing this, Liz asks Chris to stay with her at her grandfather's place. Unfortunately, Liz's grandfather arrives there and chases Chris away. Liz tries to make him understand that she has no place to go, but he doesn't listen and pushes Liz. Because of this, Liz decides to leave her grandfather's home and accompany Chris. In this way, Chris and Liz leave their respective houses at the age of 15 and start living on the streets and metro stations. Soon, they start begging for money. Sometimes, they also sneak inside their friends' houses and spend the nights. As the duo becomes more desperate for food, they even start stealing grocery items from supermarkets. After spending some days alone, Liz reveals that the outside world is cruel and her home is where her mother is. She comes back to Jean and helps her change for bed. When Jean inquires about where she's staying, Liz reveals that she's been staying with her friends because her grandfather hit her and she could not stay there anymore. Although sad for her daughter, Jean suggests Liz to continue going to school. After Jean falls asleep, Liz walks out of the house and again starts living with her friends. One day, Liz stops at a bar where Jean often visits. After not finding Jean there, she presumes that her mother has finally quit drinking. However, a stranger approaches her and informs her that Jean has passed away two days ago. Heartbroken, Liz runs to the roof of a tall building and cries out loudly. The next day, Liz's careless grandfather hasn't even arranged a funeral for Jean. Her body is being buried under a community area with no tombstone on it and Liz can do nothing about it. Soon, everyone else walks away, but Liz continues to be by her mother's side. She remembers all the good times she spent with her mother during her childhood. Right then, it hits Liz that she's all alone in the world and that she has to do something spectacular to change her life around. In the next scene, Liz visits a community school trying to get an admission. At first, the receptionist, Miss Wanda, informs her that she's late for the appointment. But when Liz pleads that she's desperate to learn and just needs a chance, she asks her to wait to meet the head of the school, David. While waiting, Liz fills the admission form along with the introductory essay on the topic of dreams. Later, Liz meets with David and tells him about how desperate she is to take her education forward and to come out of the underprivileged community she was born in. Seeing her desperation to change her life, David immediately accepts her admission and asks her to bring her guardian to complete the admission process. After this, Liz goes straight to Peter, who's living in a shelter home. She somehow convinces him to help her get the admission, and he agrees. Later, Liz brings Peter to the school, where he talks awkwardly but gets the admission process completed. Before returning to the shelter home, Peter tells Liz that he too is suffering from AIDS. Hearing this, Liz becomes devastated and starts crying. This time, Peter comforts her and suggests that she stay at school and complete her studies. In the following scene, Liz can be seen attending her class, and soon she turns out to be one of the most intelligent students there. She gets an A- on her test paper, but still visits David, asking him ways to improve her grades to get an A. David tries his best to make her understand that A- is a good grade, but Liz insists that she wants the best. Liz then starts taking more than 10 classes a day so that she can complete her high school studies before 21. She stays at her school till 11 p.m. and continues reading. She also plans to finish the four years of high school studies in two. Afterwards, Liz works hard, managing time to read even while doing her part-time job. One day, she meets with Chris on the side of the railway platform. She takes her to the school asking her to join, but Chris seems quite ignorant. There, David informs Liz that he's got the best grades in the whole school and is selected for a paid trip to Boston. Liz is in disbelief at the news and she keeps on staring at the brochure of Boston. In the next scene, David takes his students to Harvard and shows them the places around. Liz is astonished to see the place and the students there. David notices her amusement and assures her that she can also be a part of Harvard if she studies hard. Back at school, Liz is looking through the scholarship essays and trying to find the best one for her. At the same time, Miss Wanda provides her with information about the New York Times essay competition, which is giving $12,000 to its winner. 
This immediately grasps Liz's interest and she starts writing an essay. The essay is based on her life and how she's overcoming the obstacles. After a few months, Liz asks Miss Wanda to put a stamp on her essay for the New York Times. Miss Wanda asks her about why she's late to post the essay. In reply, Liz tells her that she was waiting to turn 18 so that she could live an independent life and get no trouble for being homeless. Miss Wanda immediately stamps her letter and a delighted Liz rushes to post it. Shortly after, Liz's essay gets selected and she's called for the interview with the New York Times. As she has no formal dress to wear, Liz visits her sister Lisa and requests her to provide some decent clothes for the interview. Lisa also seems to have poor eyesight like Jean and struggles to even open the door. Despite this, she provides Liz with her overcoat and wishes her luck. In the next scene, Liz can be seen in the office of the New York Times, ready for her interview. There, she tells the interviewers about how desperate she is to study further and that it's not possible without the scholarship. She also tells them about how much she loved her mother, despite her being a drug addict, legally blind, and schizophrenic. After the interview, the New York Times editor approaches her and informs her that she has won the New York Times scholarship. Hearing this, Liz becomes so happy that she hugs the editor. Following this, the New York Times organizes a media announcement program and declares Liz as the sixth New York Times scholarship winner. There, Liz is asked about how she achieved all this, and in reply, Liz mentions that she had no other choice than to work hard and bring her life back on track. She also mentions that she'll give everything back to the community after she's able. Liz then walks out from the podium, with everyone taking pictures of her and clapping for her. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.